Hey guys, so this is a continuation of my examples regarding the precise definition of a limit or the epsilon delta definition. So in these examples, we're going to be having, we're going to look at examples with no specific epsilon where we want to find the delta. So in this case, we're trying to find the specific delta for each um, limit that would correspond to the precise definition. So the precise definition of the limit is here. So this is something that you should already feel comfortable with before you jump into this video. And you should already have been kind of working with numeric values of epsilon before you start this. Personally, I think that this goes a lot better if you have some sort of intuitive idea of what all these things mean. So just a, a warning there, if you don't know those things or if all of this sounds like something you've never heard of before, maybe go back and watch some of those other things. So these are the three limits that we're going to look at. So we're basically looking for what is the delta that goes with these limits. So let's start with this first one. So notice with how the limit is set up. So the precise def definition of a limit is telling me my C, my F of X, and my L. So if I just want to write those things out in this particular problem, so my C is 1, my L is 2, and my F of X is the square root of 5 minus X. And so we are looking for the delta in this situation that goes with this totally not specific epsilon. So if you remember the story I told in the precise definition of the limit explanation video, that was kind of the last part of the story that we had where you try to find that general solution. So that's what we're trying to do here, except these are going to be much more complicated examples than what I was talking about in the video. Okay. So to start, I'm going to use this part of the definition of the limit. And in this case, what I can fill out is I can fill out the f of x and the l. So in another example video, I actually was plugging in numbers for epsilon, but that is not the case for this set of examples. We don't have a specific epsilon. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up. And so you want to still kind of get everything in terms of x. So you want to solve this for x, just like you would if you had a specific number for the epsilon. So I'm going to go ahead and try to solve this inequality. So let's see. I've got this. And then I can add the 2 to both sides. And let's see. So I get this. And then I want to square both sides. So... I get 2 minus epsilon squared is going to be less than 5 minus x, which is less than epsilon plus 2 squared. So I'm running out of room, so let me make some space. Okay, so now I can go ahead and subtract the 5 from all sides. So I'll go ahead and subtract the 5, and this is less than negative x. And then I've got epsilon plus 2 squared minus 5. Now let's go ahead and just do the multiplication for this and kind of finish this off before we um, solve for x. So if I multiply everything out, this will become 4 minus 4 epsilon plus epsilon squared minus 5. This is less than negative x. I haven't done anything to the x yet. And then this is epsilon squared plus 4 epsilon plus 4 minus 5. So now what each side reads as is this is, um, let's see, this is epsilon, m epsilon squared minus 4 epsilon minus 1 is less than negative x. And then I've got epsilon squared minus 4 epsilon minus 1. Oop, sorry, that should be plus 4 epsilon. Okay, so there we go. And so now if I divide... So now I can divide all sides by negative 1. And remember when you divide by a negative with an inequality, you flip the signs of the inequality. So this is going to become then 1 plus 4 epsilon minus epsilon squared. Notice that I flip the inequality. And then this side is going to be 1 minus 4 epsilon minus epsilon squared. Now a major pro tip here. You're going to want to reorder this. So just reorder this now. So what I mean is have, have this part like flip, flip your sides. So this is 1 minus 4 epsilon minus epsilon squared. This is less than x. This is less than 1 plus 4 epsilon minus epsilon squared. So do that so that you don't mess this up later. Okay, so now we can start working towards finding our delta. So let me clear some space. And just one thing that I, I want to point out to you before we, we go any farther. So 
if you remember from the video where I, I break down the epsilon delta definition, like just the kind of the theory behind it. So these points really should be kind of working around your C. So notice that at least in this case, um, you have one, which was your C, and then you kind of have these like points around it that, that are giving you the structure for those two X values like we talked about in, in the previous video. So now what we can do is we can find our delta. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the um, X minus C is less than delta part of our definition. And I can plug in the C, so this is one. So this becomes negative delta is less than X minus one, which is less than delta. So this becomes one minus delta, and then this is gonna be one plus delta. So now I can go ahead and set this side equal to this side and I can set this side equal to this side. So let's go ahead and do that. So I have one minus delta equals negative four epsilon, um, sorry, I missed the one here. This is one minus four epsilon minus epsilon squared. So if I go through and I solve for delta, this will become just four epsilon plus epsilon squared. And then in the, the golden color, so I've got one plus delta, this is gonna be one plus four epsilon minus epsilon squared. So I get delta equals four epsilon minus epsilon squared. Okay, so what do you do now when you get different deltas? Cause you have to figure out what is the delta that corresponds with the precise definition of the limit. So if you can tell, it's always the one that's the smaller of the two. So remember your epsilon is greater than zero. So this, this will be bigger than this, so this is the smaller smaller of the two. So this delta, this is the delta that we are looking for. That's our that's our answer for this particular problem. Okay, so let's move on to the next one. So this one is a piecewise function, which is going to throw you off a little bit, but notice that this is basically like take a second just to wrap your head around this. Maybe pause the video if you need to make sure you believe this limit. So as far as what we're gonna be doing, so we're talking about every other point but one. So this is not really that important. This is the fact that six, we have this six when X equals one. It doesn't really matter because we're, we're talking about being around one at all times. So we're always gonna be kind of working with this function here. Okay, so we're gonna be doing the same steps from before. So I've got my F of X minus L is less than epsilon. So I'm gonna plug in what I can. Now, first of all, what do you plug in for your f of x? Well, like I said, we know that we're not actually gonna be specifically at one, we're talking about a distance around one. So the f of x that I wanna choose in this example is gonna be two x plus one. And then my limit was three. So now I can go ahead and, and push forward with this. So this becomes negative epsilon is gonna be two uh, x minus two, which is less than epsilon. And so if I go through and I solve this, so I get two minus epsilon, it's less than two X, which is less than epsilon plus two, and then divide everything by two. So I have, let's see, this is one minus one half epsilon is less than X, and then one half epsilon plus one. Okay, so that's kind of the, the structure of my X values. Again, notice that these are talking about kind of our, our C. So remember our limit is going to um, one here. This is our C. And these points are actually kind of creating um, that window or that space or that distance around, around our C. Okay, so let me clear some space and we'll keep going. All right, so on to the delta. So I'm now going to take this X minus C is less than delta. So like I said, the C in this particular problem is one. So I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. So I'm, I'm just gonna go ahead and set this up so I can solve it. So here's kind of the structure and now I need to solve for my X. So I'm gonna have this one minus delta and then this one plus delta. And so once again, so I can take this part and set it equal to this, this part and set it equal to this. So let's get this party started. So I've got one minus delta equals one minus negative one half epsilon. So if I solve for this, I get that my delta will equal one half epsilon. And then in green here, so let's see, so let's start with one plus delta equals one half epsilon plus one. So I get the distance here will be one half of epsilon. So in this case, they're the same. So 
doesn't really matter which one you choose. So um, the delta that I'm looking for for this specific limit would be one half of epsilon. So you give me any epsilon, and if I just take one half of it, that's the, the delta that I need around my, my x. Okay, so last one. So again, you might want to actually pause the video just to convince yourself of this limit value before we move on. So for this particular one, you'll just want to notice here that x squared, so x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, this can be simplified to x plus 2. So take a second to convince yourself of that if you are not convinced. So this is going to help us out as we work through this. Okay, so working with our definitions, so I'm going to start here again. So here's my, oops, so I'm going to plug in my f of x. So my f of x is x squared minus 4 over x minus 2, and then all of this minus 4, that's going to be less than epsilon. So from here, now I can go ahead and simplify my function. So my function can simplify as x plus 2 minus 4, less than epsilon. And so now I can break this up. So this is negative epsilon is less than x minus 2, which is less than epsilon. And so ultimately I get this um, 2 minus epsilon is less than x, which is less than 2 plus epsilon. And again, notice that this is talking about, so these are distances around x, so these are already being kind of clearly defined here. So you can probably already see what the delta is going to be, but we'll just finish this for the sake of clarity. So using this part here, I'll clear some space. And so now I can go ahead and find my delta. So I'm going to have my x minus c is less than delta. So in this case, I've got negative delta is less than x minus 2, which is less than delta. So then I get 2 minus delta is less than x, which is less than delta plus 2. So I can take these parts and set them equal these parts and set them equal. So I've got 2 minus delta equals 2 minus epsilon. So uh, if you're kind of catching on with this, we can see here that the delta will equal epsilon and that's going to be the same thing on the other side. So I have um, my delta plus 2 equals 2 plus epsilon. So once again, in this case, my delta equals epsilon. So sometimes they'll be equal, sometimes they won't. If they're not equal, then you just choose the minimum one. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions or comments or if there's other things that you'd like to see, feel free to leave me a comment. And otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.